get started. All right. My name is Saul Willers. I'm a back-end developer at Previous Next. I have the good fortune to work with fine folk like we just saw before, Sam. Um, I have been doing web development for an awfully long time. I think 20 years at last count. I've been in Drupal for about 10 years, um, doing only Drupal. Uh, I haven't been so active in the Australian Drupal community because I've lived overseas for quite a while. I spent a lot of time in South America. Um, helped set up Drupal Chile, and these days run Drupal Gold Coast as I live up in the northern rivers of New South Wales. That's a bit about me. What are we going to talk about? The uh, Layout Builder module. So we're going to briefly introduce the concepts of what it does and how it can help us solve layout problems, uh, look at some best practices, uh, UI improvements, which is a very evolving space because it's a relatively new solution in Drupal. Uh, some performance considerations and then little things like gotchas that are good to know before you get into implementation. So, what is it? As a super high level overview, it is, if you've come from Drupal 7 or Drupal 6 space, it is like panels. So it's a layout solution and it allows control over entity type layouts or also on a per entity basis, the same control. Uh, the version ship with 8.7 was a minimum viable product. So it's important to remember that there's a lot of scope for improvements in the, in the module and the space. Uh, the, and the UX definitely needs some polish in certain areas. But I think guess the takeaway here is that we have a single core based approach to layout, which is which is really awesome. So before we dive into Layout Builder, who here has used paragraphs? Wow, that is almost everyone. I was not expecting that. Very interesting. <laughs> paragraphs is awesome, don't get me wrong. It is a wonderful tool. We still use it a lot at Previous Next. It is a wonderful tool in the context of data modeling. Where it doesn't do so well is for layout. And that's where we can have sad results for content editors. So here's a sample little th component um, that is actually relatively complex. So we have three tabs across the top and three accordions down the page with some text in the second accordion, which is currently open. As an editor, I want to go in and change accordion body two. Can you guess what this edit form is going to look like? Yeah. To quote my good colleague Sam, we owe anyone who we've given this to a care package <laughs> to say sorry. <laughs> so. The big pluses of Layout Builder over this solution is that you can see your content changes as you're making them, preview them in real time before you submit it. And Layout Builder is in core. It's a core supported solution. So let's have a look at what an edit form looks like in Layout Builder. So it doesn't map exactly to what we're talking about, but this is the nuts and bolts of what you'll see when you dive into Layout Builder. Um, there's Important concepts of a section, which is then you can have layouts per section and in those layouts, in those sections, you can add blocks. And blocks is just core terminology for things coming out of the block library. Introduce a new concept of non-reusable blocks. So these blocks are only targeted potentially at particular pages. But there's a lot of, if you understand blocks, how they work in, in Drupal, now it maps well into the, into the layout builder space. So let's talk about some editorial things that we can do and best practices for looking at Drupal at layout builder. How do we model our data? It's layout builder excels at custom layouts. So when you have something that really needs to be different, that's not like the other stuff, it does well at that. It does well when you need to lay out your entity page as you normally would and use another potential solution like Display Suite or, 
or paragraphs. It excels at that too. But it's important not to lose your structured data. That's critical here. The fields on the content type are still important. We don't want to replicate some of the worst features of something like WordPress's Gutenberg. You run the risk of shoving everything into a big blob and not having it understandable. So it's a fine line to walk. It's, I'll give some pointers about how you can look at those sort of things. So this leads us on to metadata versus content. This is a form that we should all be familiar with. You're editing a page. When you enable Layout Builder, you'll get a new tab, the Layout tab. So this makes a lot of sense from a Drupal terminology's point of view. Your fields are still on your edit page versus your layout is your new tab where Layout Builder kicks in. Is this the best for an editor's point of view? That's another question. Let's look at an approach we've taken with a client where we implemented Layout Builder and tweak this somewhat. And I remind you, this is a work in progress. There's work happening on this in core. So this is the approach that we took. We split the edit tab into edit metadata. And so this contains things that are not directly displayed on the page. So a teaser image, teaser text, they will display in things like search results. And we made edit content the terminology to refer to the layout tab itself. Because as a content editor, I come to want to change my content. That's what I'm seeing on the page, and that's where we've mapped it to here. So this is still not perfect, because we have a confusing thing of still having the content tab with inside of metadata. So this is things like title and, and some tags, for example. These are fields on the node or on the entity that will still display when rendered. So not perfect, but again, evolving space. So if we then move on to edit content, this is where we would see something that's more familiar to anyone's had to play with Layout Builder. This is Layout Builder. We can add sections and control our blocks here. Again, super important to remember this is a work in progress. This is a possible solution. There's, there's a lot of work in this space. Moving on to a solution that still is not solved by Layout Builder. And this is something where we need a capacity to allow multiple values of something and repeat that. So th this is where Paragraph shines. It's, it's a really good tool for that. It's definitely still encouraged, and we are using it in combination with Layout Builder. Uh, there's another module called Paragraph Blocks, which allows you to then to drill into your deltas on your paragraphs. So you can specifically say, I want paragraph three, and put that in this area, in this region. Uh, there's a fascinating initiative called Fieldable Fields in Core. It's not really an initiative, I guess that's a faux pas, but it's, it's something that could revolutionize this space. Um, yeah, this is, right now, a good solution for a lot of this is paragraphs, but it's a definitely evolving space. So. Block theming. This is the full editorial experience can result in a lot of blocks. And this is, and their use can be very dynamic over where they're positioned. So it's probably best to demonstrate this with a video. So here we have a component that's up the top. It's four columns wide. What happens when we drag that into a single, com single column? We get reflow. So that magic is a lot of, well, a substantial amount of investment ensuring that can, component can display across different, different uh, widths, essentially. So it's, it's another design consideration you have with Layout Builder because the flexibility offered it results in potential different displays. It, this is not uh, the only solution. You can actually lock it down, and we'll touch on the Layout Builder library to rest possibly restrict this if this seems sort of too, too open-ended and powerful. An interesting um, problem that we have when editing in Layout Builder is just the, the way that it's been implemented is that it slides in on an off-tray off canvas on the right. And it's easy to outgrow the, the dimensions of that. So there's a 
couple possible solutions. Um, the layout builder modal module, which essentially takes any forms in your, in your right hand column and, lo and renders it in the modal. Um, it's not yet fully accessible and it has a number of implementation issues. So it's, yeah, it's, it, could, it has potential, but it's, it might not be the solution. Another relatively straightforward way is simply widen the canvas tray. So this is the right hand canvas looking wider. So you see that we have more room to move. Restricting available options. So it can be overwhelming when you introduce a content editor to the block interface, uh, both layouts and blocks when they're exposed to layout builder. So uh, the layout builder restrictions module, again, a, a contrib add-on, allows you to specify sections as well as which blocks will be allowed in those sections. So you can get f quite fine-grained control over what you're exposing to your editors. On a similar topic, there's the layout builder library module, which I mentioned before, which allows you to avoid giving potentially too much control to the editors. So it allows you to define which layouts you want them to be able to use. So it's a lot more restricted and they can't shoot themselves in the foot, which is, which can be good. Again, it depends on your, your, your editor. Styling a block. This is a common requirement. Um, a possible solution is the, the layout builder styles module, which allows you pretty simple things. You can add in classes on sections and blocks. So it allows you greater control in, when you come to theme. So another UI cons um, possibility in, layout, in the layout builder world is quite interesting, something new, and it's uh, called layout builder everywhere. So it's a relatively new contrib module by Tim Plunkett, still very much in development. And if, it has a lot of similar concepts to its namesake, which is panels everywhere. So the idea is basically to control the site Chrome. So we don't want to be restricted to just our content area. We want the same interface for Layout Builder with the entire content of the site. So here's an example of, the, of Layout Builder everywhere enabled. Um, you'll see that the different sections of the site are, are interactable, so for want of a better word. You can drill into the header section, your content section, or your sidebar. You notice it introduced the concept of view and layout in our toolbar here as well. So if we click in the sidebar, we'll activate the layout mode and we've essentially drilled into this side bit of Chrome and we are now having the same layout builder interface for that bit of the, bit of the, the Chrome. Its implementation is really interesting. I've only sort of kicked the tires of it briefly, but it has a lot of potential because it also works in the way that content editors think about their site. It's all just content, I want to edit it. So watch this space, I would say. Let's move on to performance. Block Blacklist is quite a useful module. Um, <coughs> Drupal exposes a lot of blocks, every field on every entity type by default and Layout Builder performance can suffer as a result. And most of the performance improvements around Layout Builder probably help revive or revolve around trying to help this, this dilemma. So block black blacklist totally removes a block from ever being exposed within Drupal. Uh, either, another solution is uh, custom code, which is useful for when you're controlling your entity type and you have full control over it and you'll, you understand the need for when you, you want or don't want a field exposed in the, in the block listing. A couple of patches that, uh, thankfully one of them got recently committed, um, massive improvement to recursive rendering. Um, the second patch is quite interesting in that it tries to work in the space of automatically removing 
blocks that shouldn't be exposed. It's a complex space um, and it will help layout builder performance in general, but it's, again, it's evolving. It's an evolving issue. Let's briefly touch on some gotchas. These are things that are good to know, uh, probably, hopefully, before you go implementing layout builder. Translation support is interesting. Uh, translations, specific layouts, are not supported in it by layout builder core. So thankfully, Contrib comes to the rescue again. There are two options, symmetric, where you can translate blocks, but you can't add or, or delete them. This has a likely path to inclusion in the core layout builder solution versus asymmetric translations where you can add or edit blocks as well. It's not simply a one-for-one -one translation. This is unlikely to go into core, but it could work for your, your use case. This, unfortunately, the two approaches are totally incompatible, so you've got to choose one up front. Form blocks break layout save. This is a, a curious one. So if you have something in your layout builder form that is a form itself, that could be a, a search form, a placeholder for a search, a views exposed filter, or web form, it's very likely that that will break your save button. It's a real gotcha when you first use, start using uh, layout builder. So a custom form alter can replace these with placeholders. That's the, that's the simple, straightforward solution. And there's definitely ongoing work in Core 2 to solve this in a more generic way. If more than one editor goes to edit your, the same layout builder page at the same time, you, get, you tread on each other's toes. It is not pretty. Um, so there's a work in progress patch to mimic the views UI locking system that uses temp store. So essentially you'll be shown a message when you come to edit it saying this is locked. Do you want to break the lock so you don't start treading on people's toes? API access is non-existent currently. So any HTTP request to fetch the layout builder field data will basically return nothing. So this breaks things like default content and a slew of modules in that space. It's a tricky space with ongoing work. There's considerations around the normalization of the field, the validation of, the, of layout builder itself, which is currently heavily tied to the form API and the UI, I should say, and access. Again, a, a gotcha to, to think early on. There's a lot of great resources around, around this. Uh, the core talk's actually pretty bloody good. It was a tribute to our gate system that it was one of the barriers that had to be of a high enough standard to introduce this module to core. So it's a, it's a, it's a nice resource there. There's a, there's a couple of talks from DrupalCon Europe recently um, on the ecosystem. And what's next? The second one was Tim Plunkett presenting what's on their radar. And the core issue queue is the way to uh, get involved with this. It's, it's uh, as always with Drupal, it's the, it's the source to, to help out. So there's a lot of evolving best practice in the layout builder space. It's definitely ready for use now, which is that I'd love that to be the takeaway here. Um, consider your content architecture. Don't try and shove everything into layout builder. There are gotchas, things like translation, API access. You need to consider these early in the design process. But it's awesome to finally have a core approved way of doing layouts. And I, I look forward to this being the, the way that we lay out content in Drupal everywhere. That's it. Thank you. We have a time for a couple of questions. So, yeah. um, if I enable the layout builder for certain node type, where it's been saved, is it uh, config, yeah, or is it saved in content like database? Uh, yeah, it's a really good question. Where is the layout builder data saved? Um, if it's enabled for a content type, um, it will be saved in config. So 
say you enable it for pages, on all pages, that is in config. However, if you then, Layout Builder is flexible enough that you can override an individual node page as well. And if you do that, that is then stored in content. So it's a field that's attached to that entity. So the answer is both. Any more? Uh, <clears throat> thank you for sharing. Um, so when you say there's no API access, does that mean the headless Drupal cannot use this one? Or what's that Correct. mean? Correct, correct. So it's not totally the configurer is not exposed? Yeah, so if you try and access the layout builder or the layout field through a JSON API request, currently in core, that field will be totally empty. Mm. So there's, there's a patch that allows you to access it, but it's bypassing a lot of access controls, it's bypassing validation, I think, is, is the big hold up here. Oh, yeah. So because if you want to submit that field via post request to JSON, there's currently all the, all the validation is, is highly coupled with the, the UI in, the, in Drupal. So you, you're bypassing that altogether. So Yeah, I think uh, that that's, uh, makes sense. Uh, also, I think um, headless Drupal, um, decoupled Drupal, um, the content and the layout, uh, it may be not working um, because it may serve uh, several front end so each front end can have different layout. Indeed. And yeah, does that support like a multiple layout for one page? I'm not quite sure what you mean. So a page will have its say, own defined layout. Yeah, say one page, I have two front end, the website uh, will use the same page data. I see, I see what you mean. Yeah, so that would be kind of the responsibility of your front end to render the same layout data in different ways. Um, but by default, the layout builder is only going to implement yeah. one, one type of control of the layout, and that's it. It probably could be custom modified to allow multiples, but that would be, you'd be getting that's into a large work, yeah, you need to yeah. think about. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, no worries. Last question. Just a quick one. Can it work with view modes? Yes, it can. So yep. That might actually address that. That's true. Uh, although, yeah, that's a really good point. You would still have the... D no, I'm well, thinking of a feed here. So, similar, yeah, but you'd still have the only the, the one... Fit. You would only define the layout once. So, you... Unless you had something in the pipeline that changed the output, but you're still going to be defining the layout once, and you could output them differently per view mode, perhaps, and have your front end consume that. It's a, it's a really tricky space because your front end app, your React, whatever it is, decoupled, is got to pass and interpret that layout data and do something with it. So that's that's why it's it's highly coupled with Drupal right now. So, yeah. All right, let's thank Sol one again, once again. <laughs>